right, March 22nd through the 26th. This is lesson 28. Make sure you have that lesson out in front of you. Um, we are going to focus on square roots. All right, so let's just go ahead and look at this. Um, let's go ahead and look at the first couple of exercises. For exercise 1 through 4, describe each step taken to solve the equation, then check the solution to see if it's valid. If it's not a valid solution, explain why. Alright, so um, what you would do, um, how would we, how did they go from the square root of mi uh, minus six, square root of x minus 6 is equal to 4 to the square root of x is equal to 10? They added 6 to both sides. And then how do they get x is equal to 100? They square both sides. All right. And they want to know it said to check to make sure the solution is valid. So the square root of 100 minus 6 is equal to 4. The square root of 100 is 10. 10 minus 6 does equal 4. So it is valid. All right, look at number two. How did they go from the cubed root of x that minus six is equal to four? Well, they added six to both sides. Then how did they go to, um, from the cubed root of, three, of x is equal to 10 to x is equal to, ten, to 1,000? They cubed both sides. So they want to know, is the cubed root of 1,000 minus 6 equals 4? Cubed root is found just like um, square root, only this time we're multiplying something times itself three times. So 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. So 10 minus 6 does equal 4. It is valid. All right. Let's go ahead and look at number three. The square root of x plus six is equal to four. The square root of x is equal to negative two. Um, I'm sorry. Um, let's go ahead and solve this. So I would subtract six from both sides. Get the square root of x is equal to negative two. Um, to go from a square root of x to um, something to get rid of that square root, I would square both sides. So the square root of x times the square root of x is x. And the square root of negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. All right. So I get x is equal to 4. We need to check it. So we get the square root of 4 plus 6 is equal to 4. So we get 2 plus 6 does not equal 4. So in this case, it is not a valid solution. All right. It satisfies that, but it is not a valid solution when I plug it back in. All right. Cubed root of x plus 6 is equal to 4. So go ahead and subtract 6. I get the cubed root of x is equal to negative 2. I'm going to cube everything, so I get x is equal to negative 2 times negative 2 is 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So they want to know, is, the, um, is negative 8 a valid solution? So the cubed root of negative 8 plus 6 is equal to 4. All right. Um, so the cubed root of negative 8 is negative 2. Plus 6 is equal to 4. 4 does equal 4, so it is valid. Alright. Um, what was the first step taken in solving the radical equation in exercise 1 and 2? It was adding 6 to both sides. Alright, we isolated our radical. What was the second step? 
the second step was either to square it or cube it to eliminate that radical. All right, now let's look at exercise three. We did the exact same steps. We used the same steps to solve. Um, this time it didn't work. There was no solution. Why? Uh, well, this is one of the focus points of the lesson. All right, for four to be a solution, the square root of four would need to equal negative two. Even though negative 2 squared is 4, we define the square root of 4 as 2 so that our function, our f of x, is equal to the square root of x. It only takes on one value of x is greater than or equal to 0. So as a result, the square root of a positive number is only the positive value. Therefore, 4 is an extraneous solution. If you remember, extraneous solution means it's something I was able to get an answer, but when I plug it back into my original, it does not satisfy it. Um, we learned that with rational equations can have extraneous solutions. Why did the solution process work in exercise four? Because we used a cube root of a negative number is a negative answer. The cube root of a negative number is a negative. So a cube root equation does not have the same issues with a negative number. All right. So cube root and square roots are a little different when it comes to those negative numbers. So let's go ahead and look at example number one. Solve the radical equation. Be sure to check your solutions. All right. So the very first thing I'm going to do is what? Um, I would suggest that you add 2 to both sides. So we have the square root of 3x plus 5 is equal to 1. How do we eliminate that radical? Go ahead and square both sides. When I square a radical, I just get what's under that radical. 1 squared is 1. Now I can subtract 5. 3x is equal to negative 4. Divide by 3. x is equal to negative 4 thirds. All right, it says be sure to check your solution. So now we've got to check it. So 3 times negative 4 thirds plus 5 minus 2 is going to be equal to negative 1. Um, so then I have this. Those threes divide out and cancel. So I have negative 4 plus 5 minus 2 is equal to negative 1. I have the square root of 1 minus 2 is equal to negative 1. The square root of 1 is 1. 1 minus 2 is equal to negative 1. Negative 1 is equal to negative 1. So it is a valid solution. It is a valid solution. What was the first step we took? Well, we isolated the radical. We got rid of that too. Second step that we took was we eliminated the radical altogether by squaring both sides. The purpose of that was to eliminate the radical so that when then we just have an equation to solve. All right? All right, so let's go on. Solve each radical equation. Be sure to check your solution. You're always going to check your solution to make sure that you get an extraneous, you don't get an extraneous situation. All right? Guys, I don't have anything to eliminate. Um, I just need to eliminate my radical. So I square everything. So I get 2x minus 3 is equal to um, 11 squared is 121. I'm going to add 3. I get 2x is equal to 124. Divide by 2, x is equal to 62. All right? I'm going to check that. So 62 times 2 is 124. Minus 3 is equal to 11. 
So um, 124 minus 3 is 121 is equal to 11. 11 is equal to 11. So it does work. All right. All right, let's look at this one. I have a cubed root. So once again, I'm just going to cube everything. So I get 6 minus x is equal to negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. 9 times negative 3 is negative 27. Subtract 6. Negative x is equal to negative 33. Divide by negative 1. x is equal to 33. All right, let's go ahead and check. Cubed root of 6 minus 33 is equal to negative 3. Cubed root of um, negative, what, 27 is equal to negative 3. Well, let's figure this out. Negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 is negative 27. So it does work. All right, so we say it does work. Look at this one. I'm going to add 9. I have the square root of x plus 5 is equal to negative 3. Square everything. So x plus 5 is equal to negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. Subtract 5. x is equal to 4. All right, let's look at this. So I have 4 plus 5 minus 9 is equal to negative 12. The square root of 9 plus 9 is equal to negative 12. The square root of 9 is 3 minus 9 is equal to negative 12. Um, negative 6 does not equal negative 12, so there is no solution here. Okay? It's an extraneous situation. All right, look at this. I have radicals on both sides. How do I get rid of those radicals? Square both sides. And when I square it, I get 4x minus 7 is equal to 3x plus 9. Now I'm going to solve it just like I would any other equation. Add 7 to both sides. x is equal to 16. I need to plug that back in. So I get 4 times 16 is 64. 64 minus 7 is 57. All right, um, and I'm just kind of saving myself a few steps here. So 16 times 3 is 48. 48 plus 9 is the square root of 57. It's the same, so I know that it does work. All right, let's look at this one. Um, this one's a little bit different. Notice I have a number on the outside of the radical. I'm just multiplying. So I'm going to... Um, do negative 12, and I'm going to multiply that negative 6, or x minus 6, and I need to do um, square my 18, so I get 1350. So negative 12x plus 72 is equal to 1350. Subtract 72. I get 1278 divided by negative 12. So x would be equal to um, 106. All right, 0.5 negative. Um, when I put that back in there, guys, notice I'm going to get negative 112.5. I can't do that, so there is no solution. Okay? All right, let's go ahead and look at number 10. Um, I'll tell you what. I'd like for you to do number 10, 11, and 12 on your own. I will tell you number 11 and number 12, you're possibly going to get... Um, Two answers, okay? You're possibly going to get two answers because there is an x squared in there. 
Alright, multiply each expression. How do we multiply radicals? Guys, when we multiply radicals, we do exactly what we do with distributive property. Alright? We use exactly like we use uh, distributive property. So I'm going to multiply all of this and all of this. So the square root of x times the square root of x is x. The square root of x times negative 2 is negative 2 square root of x. 2 times the square root of x is 2 square root of x. And 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Notice that these cancel out, so I get x minus 4. Alright, same thing here. Square root of x times square root of x is x. Square root of x times 4 is 4 square root of x. 4 times square root of x is 4 square root of x. And 4 times 4 is 16. So I have x. Combine, I have 8 square root of x plus 16. Alright. And then I'm going to um, do the same thing here. Guys, when I multiply x minus 5 times x minus 5, there, it's all under the square root, which just means I multiply this. I get this. I get the square root of x minus 5 squared. That is x minus 5. All right. All right, so then let's look at the next examples. Um, rationalize the denominator in each expression. That is, rewrite each expression so that the fraction has a rational expression in the denominator. In other words, I've got to get rid of the square root in my denominator. To do that, I have to multiply times, the times everything. So I'm going to rewrite my problem. And I'm going to multiply it times x, the square root of x minus 9. Alright, so here's what I end up with. I end up with x minus 9 times the square root of x minus 9 over, when I multiply the x minus 9 times the x minus 9, I get x minus 9. And then simplify. Look, there we go. So I have the square root of x minus 9 is my answer. Alright, same thing here. x minus 9 over the square root of x plus 3. I'm going to multiply times the square root of x plus 3 times the square root of x plus 3. Alright. And then, I'm sorry. In order to get rid of the... Um, rationals, I've got to subtract, or I've got to do the opposite, x minus 3, all right, because I don't want to end up with a radical in the bottom. All right, so doing that, um, I get x minus 9 times the square root of x minus 3, all right, over i got to multiply these, so x times x, or square root of x times the square root of x is x. I get negative 3 square root of x and positive 3 square root of x, so that gets rid of that. And then 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Look what happens, and I have x, square root of x times, or minus 3. This is why I want to use the opposite here, because I want to, if I don't, look what happens when I use the same signs. I end up with radical in the denominator. So I'm trying to get rid of that radical, so I'm going to use the opposite. All right, I'm going to use the opposite. Rewrite 1 over the square root of x minus 5 in an equivalent form with a rational expression in the denominator. All right, so I'm going to do what I just did. I'm going to multiply times the square root of x plus 5 
over the square root of x plus 5. So I get the square root of x plus 5 on top. x Square root of x times the square root of x is x. I get a positive 5 square root of x and a negative 5 square root of x. And then minus 25. There is nothing else I can do with that, so I'm finished. Solve the radical equation. 3, is, three over the square root of x plus 3 is equal to 1. All right. Um, be sure to check for extraneous solutions. So let's do this. 3 over the square root of x plus 3 is equal to 1. Um, since it's in the bottom, I'm going to multiply everything times the square root of x plus 3. Alright, so when I do that, look what happens here. So I get 3 is equal to the square root of x plus 3. In order to get rid of that radical sign, I'm going to square everything. So I get 9 is equal to x plus 3. Subtract 3, and I get x is equal to 6. I want to make sure that it's not an extraneous solution. So I get 3 is equal to the square root, or 3 over the square root of 6 plus 3 is equal to 1. So I get 3 over the square root of 9 is equal to 1. 3 over the square root of 9 is 3. So 3 over 3 does equal 1, so x is equal to 6. Without solving the radical equation, square root of x plus 5 plus 9 is equal to 0, how could you tell that it has no real solution? Um, the radical expression, square root of x plus 5 is positive or 0. In either case, adding 9 will not give me 0. All right, so I can figure this out, and it's either going to be a positive number or zero. All right, so at the square root of x plus 5 is either zero or a positive number. So adding zero to zero or, I'm sorry, adding 9 to 0 or a positive number will never give me 0. Okay? Alright guys, that's the end of our lesson.